Welcome to the Original Gangsters Podcast. I'm your host, Scott Bernstein. We're going back up to the great white north to give you guys some Hells Angels news. We haven't been up there for a couple of weeks, so there's a handful of things we need to touch on related to the uh, 81 and uh, all of their kind of full offensive uh, going after the Rizzutos, going after anything they can really get their hands on. And it looks like they might be playing a role in this Drake-Kendrick Lamar rap feud as well. Um, but we'll get to that at the end. Let's start with, it looks like we've had some, you know, another day, another um shift in the landscape that is this hell's angels war uh, kind of going on on uh, going on in two fronts uh in in, in montreal uh against the risotto mob and then in the quebec city against the blood family mafia group uh it appears and i want to shout out to one of our um commenters who who referenced this in one of our uh, latest videos um, about how the, the the rap pack mob led by uh, Anna Atna, aka Tupac, uh, who remains him and his crew remain the uh, top suspects in the Greg Woolley assassination in November of 2023. It looks like they are no longer affiliated with the Hell's Angels, and they are now at odds with the Hells Angels who allegedly had given them that contract uh, and then gave Atna and, and that Rat Pack mob there, gave them Woolies rackets in the, in the business that he was doing with the Hells Angels. But I'm told that only lasted a handful of months. Uh, the Butcher, John Philip Celestine, Woolies number two, at some point in the spring, jumped from the Rizzuto side to the Hells Angels, became a, a member of the Marauders Motorcycle Club, uh, support club of the of the 81. And I've been told he is now running the Hells Angels street gang racket. So it's like, I've said this multiple times, your friend on Monday could be your enemy on Tuesday and vice versa. So I don't, I don't know. This thing gets crazier by the second. Um, but it appears that, and I, I remember thinking back to myself when I heard about, and, and I didn't break this, you know, the Celestine move from the Rizzuto side to the um, Hells Angels side was broken by the mainstream press um, in, in Quebec. And I remember thinking to myself, well, how is that going to work with the Atna group? Well, it looked like that only it only lasted. I don't know how long it lasted. It might not have even lasted. It might not even have exist. They might not have even been in you know in a situation where they were both in that camp at the same time. We're just getting this you know news uh, filtered out. Um, so it will be interesting to see how that all plays out. Um, moving on to the SQ RCMP and their you know, law enforcement's war against the Hells Angels. Just as, you know, the enemies are popping up on the street, law enforcement's coming down super hard on these guys. Uh, Raids, arrests, indictments. Uh, And there were another, there was another set of raids in the last couple of uh, weeks in Monterey, which is the uh, region right after you get out of Montreal in uh, going into Southern Quebec, uh, abuts kind of South Montreal. Um, and there were a series of raids at, 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 of Hells Angels clubhouses in that region. So it's heating up both uh, on the street as well as um, being in the crosshairs of, of the SQ. Um, let's finish off with Drake and Kendrick Lamar. And I'm not going to get into the whole, you know, hip hop entertainment world rap beef but 
you know, if you want to learn about it, go, you know, you can deep dive it. There's a ton online right now about it. But, you know, the two, arguably the two biggest names in rap uh, have been lobbying like missiles at each other verbally um, in a, in a war of words that's lasted over the last two months and things have gotten pretty personal. Um, and it seems like lines were, you know, the lines of decency were crossed long, long time ago. And in May, uh, there were a number of incidents at Drake's mansion in Toronto, uh, one of them ending in the wounding of one of his bodyguards. This brings us to his connection to the Hells Angels. And Drake's not somebody that is shy about repping the Hells Angels. He, he shouts them out in his songs and his rap lyrics. Um, he And right now, you know, so there's a picture on your screen right now of, of a recent video that he put out in this war of words with Kendrick Lamar. Uh, authorities believe that Kendrick Lamar's people were the ones that uh, hired Crips in, in Toronto, known as the Driftwood Crips, uh, to attack uh, Drake's estate. Uh, one of Kendrick Lamar's video albums had a picture of Drake's house on it as the cover art. Um, this seems to be a response to that. What I don't think a lot of people know, and it's not really coming out in the press yet, is that from my sources, Drake's entire security is run by Hell's Angels. The picture you just saw, which was a, a, a snapshot of... Um, a screenshot of the video Family Matters, he's sitting there with his next door neighbor, Andy Kernu, who there's some debate about where he stands in Hell's Angels Nation, whether or not he's an official member, an official shot caller, that's all up for debate. But what we do know is that he's very affiliated uh, with the Hell's Angels, um, made his early fortune um back in the late 90s, early 2000s, as having the the the, the propriety, the, the trademark, the Hells Angels uh, licensing for all of Canada went all through him. So any gear that you were getting at that time, uh, he was the only one who had the official licensing of, of, of the Hells Angels to sell that stuff in Canada. He went away for about eight years on drug and racketeering gangsterism charges he claims that it was a setup because he was uh socializing with the hell's angels that he was doing business with depending on who you ask uh he's either somebody who's just friends with these guys or i know there are members of uh, rcmp and the ontario um organized crime divisions uh, that that work the bikers that think Kerno is a high-ranking member of the Toronto Hells Angels, or some people that think he's the boss of the Toronto Hells Angels. Um, succeeding Donnie Peterson, who died a couple years ago, people claim that Peterson mentored uh, Andy Kerno. This is the guy that Drake is showing off in his videos as a, I'm putting you on warning to Kendrick Lamar's people. I've heard that SQ and RCMP and Ontario law enforcement have visited Kendrick Lamar's people uh, and Kendrick Lamar, letting them know the hornet's nest that they are, you know, disturbing here. Uh, again, there were four separate altercations, one shooting at Drake's estate. This is right next to Kerno's estate. Kerno is somebody... There are surveillance photos out there of him meeting with Marty Robert. Um, that's the you know the, the 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 top of the top, the elite of the elite. When you're talking about Hell's Angels in Canada, Kendrick Lamar seems to be treading on some really really thin ice with this. This isn't Bloods Crips is one thing. That's what you had kind of with Biggie and Pac. You know, the Hell's Angels is like you're dealing with a whole other beast. Um, so. I'm not shocked that things have calmed down in the last month, but I just wanted to share some context. Um, and, and the last thing I'll say is adding on to the Drake 
not being someone who's very shy about his his uh, support of the Hells Angels. He's wore support gear out in public. And it looked like earlier this year, after some of the violence that appeared to tilt this war against the Rizzutos in the direction of the Hells Angels, it appeared that Drake's social media was like congratulating them. I mean, his personal social media. So just again... Food for thought. Uh, we'll be back to the Great White North very soon, I'm sure. Scott Bernstein, OG Pod out. Mm-hmm.